This is the Linear Algebra Lectures video series. You can find more information about this video as well as a link to the written textbook in the description below. Stick around to the end of the video to learn more about this video series and the associated teaching and learning tools I've created for it. Lecture 23, The Inverse of a Matrix. Our objectives for this lecture are to determine whether two given matrices are inverses of one another, and to use a formula to find the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. So the definition of inverse is that given a square matrix A, and we talked in the previous lecture about why the matrix has to be square for this to make sense, the multiplicative inverse of A is another square matrix of the same size, which we write A inverse, or A to the minus 1, where A times A inverse is equal to A inverse times A, which is equal to the n by n identity matrix. So for example, in this case we've got two matrices A and B, we want to show that A and B are inverses of one another, and what that means is that we need to check that a times b and b times a both equal that 3 by 3 identity matrix. So all we have to do here is multiply a times b and verify that that gives us the identity matrix I3, which remember is the 3 by 3 matrix that has 1s down that main diagonal and zeros everywhere else. And we also have to check that b times a is also equal to that 3 by 3 identity matrix. As we talked about in the previous lecture, matrix multiplication is not commutative. So just because a times b equals i, we shouldn't be convinced that b times a would also have to equal i. Now, not every number has a multiplicative inverse. For example, there's no number that you can multiply by 0 to get the multiplicative identity, which is 1. Another way of saying that is that 0 to the minus 1 is undefined. So similarly, not every matrix has an inverse. As we'll see, there are a lot of non-invertible matrices, and we call such a matrix, a matrix that doesn't have an inverse, we call that matrix singular. A matrix that does have an inverse is called invertible or non-singular. So a given square matrix is either invertible or singular. Now in the case of a 2 by 2 matrix, we've got a nice formula for the inverse of that matrix in the case where the number a times d minus b times c is not equal to 0. So if we do that calculation and that turns out to not be zero, then the square matrix A is invertible, and this formula tells us what that inverse is. Now sometimes we'll write it with the 1 over AD minus BC factored out, that just makes the formula a little bit more compact, but this is the same as the formula that you saw on the previous slide. So why does this formula work? So if we're given a matrix A, A, B, C, D here, we have our formula for A inverse, why does it work? Why is a times a inverse equal to i2 and a inverse times a equal to i2? Well, if we multiply a times a inverse, we can pull the 1 over ad minus bc scalar out front. And when we multiply the matrix a, b, c, d times the matrix d, negative b, negative c, a, here's what we get. In the upper left, we take the first row of the first matrix times the first column of the second matrix. That gives us a times d plus b times negative c, or ad minus bc. In the upper right, we have a times negative b plus b times a. Those cancel out and give us 0. In the bottom left, we've got c times d plus d times negative c. That also gives us a 0. And in the bottom right, we once again get ad minus bc. So when we multiply by 1 over ad minus bc, we get the identity matrix 1, 0, 0, 1. So that proves that a times a inverse is i2, and the proof that a inverse times a equals i2 is very similar, so I'll leave that to you to think about. Now, in the case of a 2 by 2 matrix, this quantity, this number, ad minus bc, we call that the determinant of a. And for 2 by 2 matrices, the matrix a is invertible if and only if that determinant is not equal to 0. We're going to talk about determinants more in lecture 26, so look for that lecture if you're interested in learning more about determinants. One visual way to think about the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix is that we're taking the main diagonal, A and D, and multiplying those two numbers together. That's indicated by this pink arrow here. And then we take the off diagonal, which are the numbers B and C, and multiplying those together. That's the green arrow in this picture. And so AD minus BC can be thought of as doing this crisscross motion with this 2 by 2 matrix. Now one thing that's useful about invertible matrices is that when A is an invertible n by n matrix, the equation ax equals b always has a unique solution, and we can say exactly what that solution is. It's x equals a inverse times b. So this theorem needs two things to prove it. We need to prove that a inverse b is actually a solution to the equation ax equals b, and we also need to prove that it's the only solution, that if u is a solution to ax equals b, then u was a inverse b all along. So let's talk about the existence part. 
All we have to do is show that this vector, a inverse b, works as a solution to the equation a x equals b. So that means if we plug it in for the x, that the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. And here, as you can see, if we put a inverse b in for the x, we do in fact get a times a inverse b equaling b. Let's understand the steps here. First, we can rewrite a times a inverse b as a times a inverse times b. That's from the definition of matrix multiplication. Next, we can replace a times a inverse by n by n identity matrix, i n. That's just the definition of inverse. And then the identity matrix multiplied by any vector is just that vector. That's the property of the identity matrix that we've seen several times in the last few lectures. So that's why a times a inverse b is equal to b, and that shows that x equals a inverse b is a solution of the equation ax equals b. Now, why is it the only solution? Well, let's say that we found a solution of the equation ax equals b. Maybe we found it by row reducing, maybe we just guess and checked, but somehow, some way, we found a solution of ax equals b. Our goal is to show that that solution must in fact be the vector a inverse b. So why is that? What does it mean for u to be a solution of the equation ax equals b? It means that when we put u in for x, the left-hand side equals the right-hand side, that a times u equals b. Now we can write a inverse b as a inverse times a u, that's because b and a u are equal. And then we can shift those parentheses again, that's the definition of matrix multiplication. And then a inverse times a, is i n, and i n times u is u. So that's why a inverse b has to equal u, and that means that we've achieved our goal of showing that u equals a inverse b. Something to notice here is that in the two parts of this proof, we used both the fact that a times a inverse was equal to i n, and that a inverse a was equal to i n. So if our definition of inverse had only included one of those but not the other, then we might not have been able to prove this theorem. Now, some other properties of invertible matrices are that the inverse of the inverse is the original matrix, so A inverse inverse is just A. Inverse and transpose interact nicely with each other, so A transpose inverse is equal to A inverse transpose. And when A and B are both invertible matrices of the same size, then AB inverse is B inverse A inverse. So that last statement might be a little bit surprising to you you might have expected a, b inverse to be a inverse b inverse rather than b inverse a inverse. So why isn't it a inverse b inverse? Well, what we're looking for when we say a, b parentheses inverse is the matrix that we multiply by a, b in either order to get back i. So what happens when we multiply a, b times a inverse b inverse? Well, we would like to cancel out the a and the a inverse, and we'd like to cancel out the b and the b inverse, but we can't because in order to cancel out the a and the a inverse, we would have to get around that b that's in between the a and the a inverse. And remember that matrix multiplication is not commutative. We cannot change the order of these symbols here, which means we can't get the a and the a inverse next to each other, which means we can't cancel anything out here. Instead, if we put b inverse a inverse there, now the b and the b inverse are next to each other. So b b inverse is i n. Multiplying by the identity matrix just gives you back the matrix that you started with, and then a times a inverse is again i n, and so that's why a b times b inverse a inverse is the n by n identity matrix. And similarly, if we put the b inverse a inverse on the other side, we get b inverse a inverse times a b equals i n. So that's why the inverse of a times b is b inverse a inverse. Now we've talked about inverses a lot in this lecture, but one of the things that we didn't really talk about beyond the 2 by 2 matrix case is how would we actually find the inverse of a matrix larger than 2 by 2. We don't have a way of doing that right now, and that's what we're going to talk about in the next lecture. See you there. Thanks for watching this video lecture. You can find links to the other videos in this series and to the written textbook in the description below. If you're an instructor, you can contact me for more information about the over 300 online linear algebra homework problems that I've created for the free MyOpenMath platform.